Lord Jesus. Good evening, Minister Thurston. How are you? How are you? Send my love to the family. God bless you. And I want to tell you, your posts have been blessing me each morning when I wake up and I get myself together and I start my day and I start reading uh, your Facebook posts. They're tight, but they're right. That's what we need in this last and evil day. We don't need sugar-coated lessons. We don't need sugar-coated gospel. We need the unadulterated truth, the, the gospel that's going to make us uncomfortable, the gospel that's going to make us examine ourselves, the gospel that's going to make us say, God, turn your spotlight from heaven down on me. Show me what's unpleasing to you. Show me what's unpleasing to your sight. Show me those things that may keep me from being close closer to you, being more connected to you. Show me those things that will keep me out of heaven so I can fix them while I have a chance. So I thank you for your ministry. I appreciate your ministry. You are a wonderful man of God and I'm just so glad that I was able to meet you and that I see and are able to read your post on daily um daily so don't stop living for god don't stop following the charge that god has given you don't stop standing for holiness or hell because in a day and time like this that is what we as ministers of the gospel need to do so i just wanted to say that to you that's been on my heart for a while so i'm glad you stopped through today hello to everyone if this is your first time coming in to testify tuesday welcome 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 i am your host felicia joseph and i am so glad that you stopped by even if it's for a little while to um chat with me and and listen to the things that the testify tuesday crew and i talk about Testify Tuesday is exactly what it sounds like. We meet on Tuesday here on Facebook Live and we just uh, listen. Sometimes we, well, most of the time we have guests that come on that give their testimonies, what the Lord has done for them, how they've been set free, how they've been changed, how they've been tested, but through the grace of the Lord and through faith, they have been brought through that test on the other side and now have a testimony and we just come together to tell of the goodness of the Lord that's right so that's what testify Tuesday is about so tonight we have a great guest all month long we will be talking to um, members of the center stone media group squad 2911 and this is a a group of God-fearing God-loving Christians that are walking in all different facets of the gospel. Some preachers, some teachers, some singers, some poets, some rappers, some spoken word, some ministers, um, and just some, some, I don't want to call them back end people, but some administrators. Because sometimes you look at it and it's not very easy. Even the televangelists and the televised preachers, there's always a staff, an administrative staff, that keeps everything running smoothly. And take it from me, I'm speaking on my, by, from my experience right now, it's always best when that administrative staff is saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, like-minded, because sometimes they need to check you. Sometimes they need to pray for you. Sometimes they need to intercede for you when you've ministered and given out all that God has given you and you're emptied out. Sometimes you need those people praying for you supporting you so that administrative role is a key role in ministry especially for large ministries so we have some of center stone media's admin team too that are going to come and talk to us and give us their testimonies um uh, Center Stone is an international company, so we have some folks that are here in America, they, they have some folks that are in Jamaica, they have some folks that are all around the world that make up their ministry, and I'm so excited to share with them on this month and to hear the testimonies that they have to give us. We're starting with the CEO and founder of the company, but who's also one of the artists, uh, his name is The Corinth, and he's going to be our guest tonight that's going to give us his testimony and tell us a little bit about what the Lord has done, is doing, and what we look forward to seeing the Lord do continually uh, in his life. So, I've rambled on a little bit, but 
for my testify tuesday crew that's here you know the drill i need you in the comments once you i would like you please to like and share this if you can for me please like this and share this out so that these testimonies and the the just the word of god and the the goodness of the lord and the power of the lord and the grace and mercy of the lord can reach somebody else people we know people we don't know who knows you share it once somebody on your friends page who you don't know sees it they share it to their friends who share it to their friends who share it to their friends and before you know it it's reached whoever God has intended it to reach is reach somebody at that time where they may feel like they have nothing left at that time where they feel like they're going through something so heavy and, and that's burdening them so bad that they feel they can't do it alone. And then they may hear someone else's testimony. They'll hear somebody else that's giving God the glory and the praise for what he's done and what he brought them through. And that will help them to hang on just a little while longer. That will encourage them to hold on to God's unchanging hand. That's what's the power of the testimony. It, it, it does something for the teller. It does something for, for the person that stands and tells you what God has done. But it also does something for the listener, someone who hears it. I mean, the, the, the testimony is very powerful. So please, once you like and share, please in the comments, tell me one thing that you're thankful for. I'll start you off. You know how old testif testimony service used to be? Giving honor to God, the pastor, uh, the first lady, reverend clergy, visitors, saints, missionaries, friends. I thank and praise God for being here. Thank God for my life, my health, my strength. I thank and praise God for the activities of my limbs, a roof over my head. What I wanted to tell you that God has done for me on this day is, the rest can go in the comments. It could be as simple as he woke me up. It could be as simple as, you know, yesterday I couldn't speak, but today I can. See, me being a singer, that's big for me. If I wake up and I can't talk, I wake up and I, 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 I go... That, that scares me to death. I don't know about other artists, but that scares me to death. So I thank and praise God every day that I can give him the glory, that I can open my mouth and say, thank you, Jesus, that I can open my mouth and say, God, I thank you for keeping me through the night. God, I thank you for allowing me to open my eyes. God, I thank you for allowing me to take my first breath when I wake up. I, I thank you, God, for allowing my heart to continue to have beat last night and it continues to beat this morning see these are things that we take for granted but all of these are things that god is owed glory and honor for all of things all of these things are things god is owed our thanks and our praise for amen amen i see marcus says that i'm thankful for newfound mercies amen amen um Enoel Ship, and I hope I pronounced that right. Please forgive me if I didn't, but that is a beautiful name. Says, I thank God for a new start. Amen. That's right. Giving God thanks, that's the best thing about it. When you have a repentant spirit, when you have a repentant heart, when you have a heart that wants to please God and wants to change and wants to do better and wants to walk up right in his sight and wants to make his heart glad by pleasing him, you are thankful for another chance. You are thankful for another start. You are thankful that God, I may not have done it a hundred percent today. God, I may have got an 89.3 two today but when you wake me up tomorrow morning i have another chance to make a hundred you wake up tomorrow morning you go about your day you realize god i may have gotten a 92.6 today but thank god by your grace if you wake me up again tomorrow morning i have yet another chance to strive for that hundred as long as there is breath in your body there is repentance in your heart there is is a mind to serve God and to get it right. If you ask God to forgive you, if you ask God to help you, if you ask God to strengthen you not to fall over the same stumbling block day after day, I tell you, baby, I am living proof. He will do it. If you ask him with a sincere heart, if you ask him with a mind going for it, not saying, oh, I'm going to ask God to forgive me. He's going to forgive me. I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow. You know, because there are many people, church folks that live like that. 
Many people that say, oh, God will forgive me for anything. Baby, tell me in the Bible where it says that. Show me. Show me. I need some Bible scholars. Where does it say that God will forgive you for anything? Because if you go into a situation knowing that it's unpleasing to God, knowing that it is against the will of God, knowing that it is against the way of God, and you mindfully do it and then ask God to forgive you, do you really mean it? Is that really repentance? When you go in saying, I'll just repent later, is that repentance? See, these are things we don't talk about much. We kind of shove this stuff under the rug. We sweep it under the rug and, and throw the throw rug over the dirt and dust that's underneath it, which is why the church is in the shape that it's in today. Hallelujah. You have to really mean it. You have to ask God for forgiveness with a sincere heart. You have to go in saying, I realize I'm wrong. I realize that God, I'm not strong enough to overcome this without you. I need you to help me, to help me to do better. Not God, I'm going to say this so I feel better and I can sleep knowing that I'm not going to go to hell, but I'm going to wake up in the morning and go do the same thing. No. No, we have to do better, saints. We have to do better. But yes, thank God for new mercies. Hello, Batman. Hello, Jerry Royce. Thank you for stopping by and, and checking on us here in the Testify Tuesday crew today. Amen. So these are just things that I say. When I say I was born and raised in the church, I have not always been saved. Now, I've always known the way. I was taught the way from birth. I played church a lot, but a lot of us children that were born and raised in church, we went through that play stage. We thought we were living off of our um, parents' sanctification, our parents' salvation, but oh, no, 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 no. There comes a time when you have to work on your own own soul salvation amen amen hold on i see mr thurston said the bible says god says i am nigh them who are a broken and contrite spirit to repent is to be godly sorrowful and turn away amen amen when you repent you must turn away from that thing turn away from those evil ways turn away from those transgressions turn away from those things that make your spirit dirty you can't repent and ask god to forgive you of something that you intend to do again that's like me walking up to you slapping you straight across your face telling you i'm sorry and as soon as you come in to hug me and tell me you forgive me i slap you again i don't do, would you accept that apology now, this is God, the all-knowing heavenly father. So when you come to him with that, oh, Lord, forgive me, oh, God, I'm sorry, in Jesus' name, amen, that's not a contrite and broken spirit. That's you saying, oh, I'm going through the phases. I'm going through the motions. It's time out for going through the motions in the church. It's time out for that. The devil is busy. He is running rampant. He is seeking, killing, and destroying all those that he can. He know his time is almost up and he's trying to devour as many of us to share his faith. The only one God promised that faith to was him, but he wants to take as many people as he can with him. I tell you, don't be deceived. Don't be fooled. Don't be led astray. You get a hold of God and you hold on with everything you have. You let nothing deter you from your soul salvation. Not friends, not family, not jobs, not money, not wealth, not comfort. None of these things are more important than your soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, I thank you. And we need to know this. Hallelujah. I am Minister John E. Ross from the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Show. This would be a awesome topic to have on Let's Talk to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Minister Ross, I, I spoke to my manager. I spoke to Chanel. She said that she was going to get in contact with you because I am... I do want to come on and talk with you. And that would be a great, great, great um, topic. Yes, Reverend Bush, we have we have got to do better. Hello, um, 
I said hi to Jerry. I said hi to Minister Ross. I want to make sure I'm not leaving anybody out. Sometimes when I start speaking, I'll forget to read these comments. So y'all, please do not do not hold that against me. I love you all. We can't keep doing... Okay, that's what I was looking for. Minister Thurston said, we can't keep doing the same wrong and claim we're still going to heaven in a handbasket. Holiness is still right. That's right. That's right. Please hurry your mansion up. <laughs> My time slot to fill. Okay, I will... Once I get off of this broadcast, I'll reach out to her and make sure she gets in touch with you, okay? I promise. I'll, I'll talk to her tonight about it. Thank God. Now, I'm trying to see if our guest has come on. And y'all know, don't y'all laugh at me. Y'all already know that I have um, technical issues every week trying to get this situation taken care of. Now, I don't see that my guest has come on, but we can still continue to talk until we do. Um, admin team, if you see... Uh, let me see. Because... Uh, we're not when you see let me see the name that's coming up y'all bear with me one second let's see because it looks like my guest is trying to reach out to me so I have to see where he is Okay.